Hi guys, welcome back to We Should Talk, a pop culture interview series from In The Know. I'm your host, Gibson Johns, and this week on the podcast, we have Sutton Strack from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills is back. I am so excited. They took a very short break from filming after that reunion, but they just jumped right back into it. And you can tell from, from that premiere, you could tell. And I just, I'm so glad they're back. And, you know, Sutton's a really interesting interview because she chooses her words so carefully and so much more so than, I, than other interviews that I've done. Uh, I noticed this with her last season, the first time I interviewed her, and it's the same this time. She, she kind of goes at a slower pace when she answers questions in interview settings, which I really appreciate. But it also leaves... A, leave some interpretation there, I think, and pick up on some of that light southern shade that she's such an expert in. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, we got into the Lisa Rinna Oscar party back and forth that's been happening, and also Rinna's claim that Sutton should thank her for getting her on the show, and Sutton said that she had thanked Rinna for that, and she also thanked her again in this interview, and so she clearly has no qualms about that. Um, and that's just kind of, it, it, it was really interesting what she had to say. Um, we also talked about her friendship with Kyle, the Erica of it all, and sort of what she expects from her this season, um, and a, a variety of different topics that, that are around this season. And, you know, there, there's some, a lot of interesting storylines kind of brewing for, for, the, for Beverly Hills this season, and I'm really excited to get, to get into it. And um, yeah, again, I'm just so excited that they're back. Keep listening for my interview with Sutton Strack. Tune in to The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Wednesdays at 8 p.m. only on Bravo. And please rate Rate, review, and subscribe to We Should Talk on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so we're here with Sutton Strack from The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. The new season is upon us. Sutton, how are you? I'm great, Gibson. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And I'm, I'm curious for you, like, it, it kind of feels like the last season just finish and now we're already and you guys didn't wait that long to start filming again do you feel like you ever got to take a breather or do you feel like you're just like have been go 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 for the past year or so no I no I don't feel like I've taken a breath in fact my voice is is giving out on me um no it's been like we went really fast you know I think because of COVID we had to move things along right um just you never know what's going to happen these days. Mm -hmm. so. and, and I feel like you guys also, I mean, last season was a doozy and, and tough for a lot of people, but it was also a banner season for the show. I think it took it. I mean, like the, the talk around it had, had never hadn't been that, you know, that had, hadn't hit the mainstream in that in that kind of way in a really long time. So I feel like you guys just hit the ground running again, which was which was smart. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have a lot of, you know what, we, I, well, no, it's very smart of them because we didn't have a lot of time to recuperate after the reunion. So um, I think going into filming, we were sort of like mm, still having reunion feelings. Fatigue, right, and, and, and feelings, right. Um, so I'm curious for you because Andy said in a recent uh, Hollywood Reporter interview that he did that Beverly Hills has sort of emerged as the as the new crown jewel of Bravo, because it really, it's like, it's the highest rated housewives now. It's, again, it kind of gets talked about in the mainstream more so than any other franchise at this point. Do you feel that as somebody who's so in it now, who's so fully in, in, in the realm of, of Beverly Hills housewives that, you know, that you, that you're kind of like the eye of the storm in so many ways? Um, well, first of all, I like tiaras. So I, uh, uh, crown jewels, seems to be something that I would want to be involved with. That tracks. <laughs> yes. So I like that he said that. Um, you know, I don't know. I think we just have an interesting group of women mm -hmm. and a very strong group of women. So when you get that dynamic going, um, it creates interesting environment. It sure, it sure does. And I think that you guys have really this group of women that you guys have right now, it's, you, you're all, you're fun to watch. And it, it's, it, you, it's a kind of expect the unexpected kind of situation, I think for the past couple oh, yeah. of seasons. For sure, for sure, for sure. Um, so Sutton, there is something going on right now that, that you are involved with, that with Lisa Rinna about this whole Oscars party situation, it's on the show, it's on the premiere as well, but it also feel like it's sort of parallel pathing playing out in real life right now. Um, it's obviously kind of a she said, she said, she said kind of situation right now. 
and you know, with Rena's recent post, I'm just curious what, where you are right now mentally with, with this, with the, what's, with what's happening. Well, I mean, I think we saw it with him this same post last year in September. So, um, you know, we get to see this unfold. Uh, Lisa has a lot of feelings about this and, um, you know, we have to address them and we do it on the show. Mm -hmm. And do you, because it, it, a question for you, I guess, is like, it feels like something that there should be like a receipt for, or like a, some proof on, on her side, maybe for it. Is that going to emerge at all? Oh gosh. Well, you just never know what she's going to pull out of her hat. Um, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, I'm, I'm picking up that, that she's way more concerned with it than you are. Kind of. Well, you know, I think, as I said on Watch What Happens Live, this could be a miscommunication issue. So, um, you know, it rolls out on camera. And mm -hmm. um, I think just this week when, when she did that, I was doing my own cashmere launch in my store. And I'm very busy with that and with work. And I have men's stuff coming out in June. Um, so yeah, it's very exciting. And we did cashmere teas as well for men that are out. Wow. So, you know, I, I'm just busy and mm -hmm. I don't, um, I, I'm not the person that's attached to their phone all the time, unless it's like for Bumble purposes or something <laughs> like that. But um, other than that, I, that's about it. You know, my children text me, you know, I'm not, I am don't, follow a lot of stuff mm -hmm. so you're kind of a little bit on your it seems like you're pretty unbothered with it which I think is kind of a, a good approach to it all and my last question about this is just in her sort of rebuttal I would say she she kind of took a shot at you in terms of like saying that you really wanted to get on the show and she did all these favors for casting to get you on the show how do you respond to that line of of um, claims that she had I can only say that I was very reluctant um, to do this show because I didn't know what I was getting into. So I was more reluctant than anything. Mm. Um, but Lisa did, you know, in the, once I decided to do it, um, you go through the interview process and the last thing that you do is you film an all day thing. And she did film with me. She came to dinner. Jennifer Tilly also came to that dinner and, um, and, and a few other people came and they're all giving their time to do this. And they all, you know, you know, we're all kind of learning, but Lisa was very kind to do that. And, and of course I thanked her for taking the time out to do that. And, um, and I'll, and I'll thank her now, you know, thank you for taking the time out to do that for me very nice and then she had to do some kind of you know she did other things and it was very nice and I guess that's part of the process when you are like a friend of someone um I've never done that so I don't quite know and uh anytime that you take time out of your schedule to help someone yeah I mean thank you there, that, that's what she was looking for so we, were, we, we got it um, well, it's, it seems like this season son, I mean, in the, in the premiere, one of the things that you mentioned is that you, you're dating for the first time really in your life or in, in, in a I really mean, long time. Of, yeah, I know. Cause you know, I, I, um, got married in my twenties and I dated my, my husband before that. And then I was married for a long time mm -hmm. and then it took me a while kind of like it took me a while to decide to do this show. It took me a while to decide I was going to date, and um, so yeah, here I am. And you know, I dated someone for a few years, and that didn't work out. And uh, and then I was like, oh, I can't date again. This is just it's just too much, and it's so much work. It is. It really is. It's Especially so much if you're on, if you're on like an app like Bumble, it's like oh, it's a slog sometimes, right? 
I know. And where are my friends? Why aren't they setting me up? You know why? Because my friends were, I'm 50. I turned 50 in September and they're all married and all their friends are married. So there's, there, there aren't enough, there aren't enough single people in your, in your, in your no. circles, right? Kathy, Kathy Hilton told me I needed to date somebody. I was going to have to date somebody that was 70. And I said, I cannot do that. <laughs> I cannot so are you, are you looking to go younger? Are you looking to go younger or no. more or around your age? I have a, I have a, I have a five over under. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. So, yeah. So that's like my thing, but um, no, it's just exhausting. So did you, did you film any dates for this upcoming season that we might see? Well, I don't want to give it away. But I'm, I'm guessing that that's, that that's a yes. Well, that's exciting. I mean, it's exciting. Well, I'm living my life. It's a new part the of your life. Is, I'm well, I'm living my life. And so we're filming a reality show. Of so course. in reality, I'm dating. Anything, anything promising or is it, is it still sort of, you know, square one? Um, right now we're, we're square one. It's not a bad place to be. We're, we're coming up on the summer Sutton. Everyone, it's it's going to be a hot girl but... summer for you. I think, you know, you can, you can play the field. Is it? <laughs> oh I don't know. I, you know, I, I am not that person. I don't know what to do with that. Yeah. I, um, would like to find someone nice that's normal but then they probably don't think i'm normal because i'm on a reality show now that that does change things and, doesn't it yeah yeah i mean don't google me i don't google me i would be scared to see what would happen if i googled myself i would probably be terrified <laughs> and you you I'd say on this you say on the premiere that you know, you aren't looking necessarily for somebody with money because you have enough money for yourself. And yeah. it's just, no, it's just more about, it's more about the personality and, and the connection, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, if you can make me laugh, that's worth more money than gold. Uh, yeah. But I'm not, I don't need, like, I'm, I'm not looking for a rich man. Right. You know, right. I don't need anyone to take care of me financially, which is so nice. Um, I don't want to take care of anyone financially. That's kind of a thing. Um, I just want someone that's down to earth that likes to laugh, likes some country music, and um, can put up with me. <laughs> so who and likes tell, dogs? Tell, tell me that must love dogs. That's what I. That's what I say. Do you Man tell cats. me this? Who of your who of your co stars? would you trust the most with setting you up with somebody? Kyle. Uh-huh. Garcelle. Well, Crystal was going to set me up with a neighbor. Um, she texted me. Crystal texted me and said that a house, she said, honey, she was like, a house just um, sold in my neighborhood. I'm going to go check him out. I was like, oh my God. All right. I can't believe she didn't ask me to go do it with her because you know, I would love, I love a good, I love a good stalking event. Right. Well, she can, she can take know, some pictures for you, you know, <laughs> she didn't take, she, but so she did, she went over and did it and she, um, stalked and she was like, mm. Mm -mm. it's a no go. Nope. No. Yeah. She was like, no, <laughs> no. She, well, she, she tried, hey, she, but it sounds like she has, she has her, she has her, her eyes open, her ear, her ears eat peeled. Like yes, she's, yeah, I yeah, exactly. appreciated that. I appreciated that because if he had met the requirements, I would have come over and maybe, I don't know, baked him a pie. We're old school. We love it. <laughs> and said, you know, welcome to the neighborhood. I used yes. to live around the corner. And, you know, and, and this is Crystal. She's Are in you the single? neighborhood. Right, exactly. And no, I wouldn't have said that. Just give him a pie. That's how they do it in the Andy Griffith days. Mm. And then, you know, you get invited in. Okay. All right. Well, I, I'm excited to see how that plays out. And thank you. You, you mentioned, you mentioned <laughs> Kyle, you mentioned Kyle as, as somebody you would, you would trust. And I, I really am sort of, I love your friendship with Kyle. It seems like you guys you know, you rented her house. You guys seem pretty close. I mean, you, you film like a good amount of scenes together and you kind of yeah. see eye to eye on a lot of things, but at the same time, you're both not really afraid to call each other out on like little things that that's you disagree right. with. And I think that that's yeah. really important. It's not just like a, 
yes, 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 yes to each other. No. Can you just speak to your no. friendship with Kyle? Because I think it is, it's kind of low key uh, one of my favorite friendships on the show right now. Thank you. You know, it's so interesting because um, Kyle and I have a very close relationship and we talk a lot and I would, I keep saying we've become like sisters. And um, so we, we can fight a little bit like sisters. Or yeah. she'll bite a little, you know, she'll bite or maybe I'll bite. And, but then we're fine. Like it takes two seconds and I'm over it or she's over it and we don't care. Um, but we love each other for, for real. Like it's, it's kind of fun. Um, but we both kind of get on each other's nerves sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, totally. And, and, it, and it seems like, I mean, within the context of the show that like some of the other women, because she's close to women that you can sometimes spar with on camera, it, it mm -hmm. complicates it a little bit. But again, like I, she isn't afraid to call you on an opinion that she disagrees with and, and vice versa. Like you aren't, you aren't afraid to say your true opinions about some of her closer friends. Oh no, I'm never going to hold back an opinion. That's, mm -hmm. that's not going to happen. No, it's not. No, I wouldn't expect it, but I just think it's nice that you can maintain a close relationship despite some of that. Yeah. I mean, you know, we were just um, at Stagecoach together and had a great weekend. And Mauricio is just hilarious and so fun to hang out with. And um, she had some other friends there too. And they're great people. And you can always um, judge people by um, their company that they keep. I and, agree with that. Um, again, I went to her birthday party and I, just beautiful people around her. And um, I admire that. I really like, I want her to come to Augusta so she can see my friends totally. that I've known since I was little, um, because I think she would probably feel the same way. Wait, tell me about hanging out with Maren Morris at Stagecoach, but Stagecoach, by the way, because I, I I love her. I just listened to her on a podcast where she was talking about Beverly Hills Housewives, and then it was like the timing was perfect. You know that I love her, and she um, interviewed me on the Jimmy Kimmel show last year. Right, and, I forgot about that. Yes, and you know I'm a huge country music fan. I mean, I have been my whole life. I am too. Well, my dad's from Texas. So I don't have a choice. I didn't have a choice growing up. Um, my dad wanted me to learn how to sing how, like Patsy Klein. So, um, you know, I, I've been listening to Willie Nelson since I was a baby, um, who I'm also obsessed with, who was also <laughs> on the show that night. Right. And I thought he was going to be in person and I was dying. Was he virtual? He was virtual. Ugh, and to, I, no, I was like, Whew. Because I don't know, if I, I would have fainted. Right. It's like it's sometimes it's like a "Don't Meet Your Heroes" kind of thing. It's 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 hard to to face that. <laughs> I've seen him many many times, and but I've never met him. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 and I don't, you know I don't know. But she's just the sweetest, and she's very. You can tell she's a very gentle spirit, and means what she says. And I like people like that. Mm -hmm. and so does Kyle and I think that's why last year I like I understand Kyle more and more the things that she says to me and the um you know people think that Kyle was trying to get me to say something or do something last year she wasn't and I always said no that's not what it was she's she wants me to like really be that core um what she knows that I mean, she wants me to really get in there and say it. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that about her. Definitely. So yeah. let me ask you about this from, from the premiere that you come over to her Bel Air house and it's the day of that Dorit's house was broken into overnight. And it, it the, at least as it comes across in the show it, and kind of as Kyle responds to you, it doesn't seem like you express that much sympathy for what happened. And that's sort of what Kyle asks you about. And I'm curious if you can speak to that moment and sort of why maybe you didn't show as much outwardly sympathy that I guess would have been expected in that moment or as, and Kyle reacted to that. So I'm curious what you thought about what was going through your mind in that moment. Um, yeah, I think the whole thinking about that moment, what was in that moment, um, it was a weird day mm. and it felt weird. And I had had a lot going on. And so when I got to Kyle's house, I was, I was not, I was not thinking. And um, 
I was not understanding truly the severity of what had happened um, to Dorit. And so I was completely insensitive. It's something that I feel really badly about. Um, it's not like me at all. I'm not, you know, I, you know, I'm the person people call for anything. And it just, you know, it just wasn't in my brain. Mm -hmm. And I think as the show unfolds, you'll see more and more the explanation and also how I have to explain this to Dorit. And it wasn't a good moment for me. And humility is, it's um, not very fun. And, you know, it's also a very quiet thing to do. And we don't have a lot of quiet moments in that group. Yeah. So and it's I think, hard. Yeah. And I think humility is not easy and it's not fun, but it's admirable. And I think that it's, if you, if you have a moment, especially on camera, like you have to have when in this job of yours. Well, it's, it's hard to capture. Totally. It's hard to capture that. And, you know, I hated that I behaved in that way. I hated well, that. Well, I think it's great that you recognize that and you're going to, and you try to make it right. And I think that that's well, you know, the first, is, yeah. isn't this what we do yeah, exactly you have to admit and uh, you know this is what we teach our children some you know we do things that are wrong mm -hmm. a lot of times and if they're wrong and you you acknowledge in your heart that it was wrong that's the most important thing right I agree. You know? And yeah. And then, but then you have to tell that person, you know, I'm really sorry. What I did was wrong. Mm -hmm. That's all you can do. I agree. And you have to mean it, but it's if you, when you, that's, I agree. I yeah, agree. You got to go in there. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm not going to apologize unless I really feel like I was. And I, and I sense that. And I, I think we've learned that from you. It's like, you're not going to apologize because just because somebody thinks you should, and you're going to apologize because you oh, think no. you, if I, you think I, you should if i right. don't think i'm wrong you're not gonna get it i'm sorry totally it's and not I think, gonna happen i yeah. am not sorry for a lot of things from last year and i mm -hmm. do not apologize right so i mean th th that's a kind of good segue to a question that i had for you is because obviously last year was largely centered around erica and it was largely you were the one that were asking the questions and you know the reunion we saw different answers to different questions from her and, and, and what have you, but I'm curious, again, as the person who was willing to go there last year, the most, did you expect anything? Like, what did you expect from Erica this season? Did you expect any changes from her and how she was talking about anything or, you know, expressing sympathy? What, what did you expect from her? I, you know, I kind of came into it feeling very indifferent we about Erica after the reunion, especially because she's she was very hurtful, and so I got on protection mode. I was in you know armor gear around her and blinders because I didn't care. Mm -hmm. And so this season, or can we expect kind of more of the same from her in terms of, I mean, the trailer, we see her say, it's, I only care about me and the, you know, she doesn't really, that she tells Crystal that, you know, sympathizing with the victims is just the cool thing to do right now. Is it going to be more of the same from Erica? We're going to have to wait and see. Mm. And... <laughs> <laughs> Is it, let me ask you this, is it tough? <laughs> it must be tough as, as a co-star of hers these past few seasons, getting asked about it a lot, but having to sort of tiptoe around it and, is, and choose your I words really care. I don't care. 
until I see a change, I do not care. Mm. I said what I needed to say. Yeah. Um, I think everybody knows my position. I mean, I think the world now knows my position. Um, I've said everything that I've, that I've needed to say about Erica and to Erica. So, and I'm not going to change my position. I don't, I don't think you're, I'm not expecting you to. Um, yeah. It's just, it's just, it's interesting if the change had come from her end, maybe if that, if that could. We'll have evolve. to see. Yeah. We will see. Okay. Um, the trailer also, I'm, I'm curious, I don't really know who Garcelle's talking about when she says this, but she says that you should watch your back about your new friend. What are the, Garcelle. what is, <laughs> you, well, listen, Garcelle's gonna, she's, Garcelle and I, we make sure that we're okay because this tough group, and so, you know, she's going to warn me. Right. I know about, about someone. <laughs> about someone. Um, and then the last, I think we're running out of time, but the last question that I have for you, Sutton, is there is a lot of intrigue this season around what happens with Kathy. And, and, and you, you dispelled that, it had, that, that she said anything about your assistant or what have you. Yeah, but she never did. Yeah, yeah. But... I guess like I, I there's it's really hard to tell like what any sort of lead up is to whatever happens and we I don't really know what happens there's so many rumors around around I guess like what can you say to that or what what are you where are you now mentally with whatever happens or wherever Kathy stands with this group well I think we don't see Kathy for a lot into the season so you know we just have to wait and watch it okay that's that's all we're gonna get. Uh, well, Sutton, uh, I always appreciate your time, and and I I do have to say, like I when I interview you, it's you're so thoughtful with your answers, and I and I really appreciate that, and I and I it's it's fun to to, to pick your brain about about this stuff. Uh, yeah, it's I fun to pick it. my brain, and let me tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm excited to see when the dating the dating this spring and summer. I, I'm putting out good vibes for you. I really am. Yes, yes, yes. Let's put out good vibes. I just did that. I just actually was it's manifesting happening. something. Yes. I was manifesting something. It's going to happen. I, I believe in that. Um, well, Sutton, thank you so much. Everyone tune into The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills on Wednesdays on Bravo. Yes. And, uh, and it's going to be yeah. a great season. I, I mean, it, really I, it, it looks like it's, it. It's going to be like, I, I, I don't even know. I, I can't wait. Like it's I'm telling you, I, Andy's nuts. right. The, like you said, you like tiaras and you guys are the crown jewel right now. So yeah. that's, it's a good place to be. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Sutton, so much. All right. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Yeah. Bye. You All too. Right, bye. Thanks for tuning in to We Should Talk. I hope you enjoyed the interview. You can find out more about In The Know at InTheKnow.com. You can follow me, Gibson John, at Gibsonoma on Twitter and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our interviews, past and future, by searching We Should Talk wherever you get your podcasts. Hope to see you next time.